Rejoice. We have felt your presence. I pray now that in these closing moments that you will deposit something in our spirit that will seal our purpose here tonight. We thank you now in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. 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 Praise God. I, I know time is winding down, not only in the sense that we sang it, <laughs> but that little clock on the wall waits for no man. And some of us have a long way to go. And so just give me another hour or so. <laughs> the rain is falling, we're going to, you don't want to make way. <laughs> It's so nice and cool. If I had a bed back here, I'd just stay here tonight. Uh, it's nice and cool. My kind of weather. Praise God. <laughs> but I, I'm going to leave what's in my spirit because I can't get away from it. And it, it's going to come from Ephesians 4, verse 11 and 12. And he gave some apostles and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers, for the what? For the edifying of the body of Christ, for the work of the ministry, for the perfecting of the saints, till we all come into the unity of the Spirit. I want to leave this thought with you tonight that the pastor is a gift from God. Look at somebody and tell them the pastor is a gift from God. We're in a season where in a few weeks the focus will be on gifts again because every Christmas it's all about giving and receiving gifts. And we like to receive gifts, sometimes more than we like to give them, but it's better to give than to receive. But God knew the value of giving gifts that would mean something. And everything that God has given was special. Everything that God has given has significance. He doesn't just give forgiven sins. Matter of fact, he gave the great supreme sacrifice. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. So God is a giver. Aren't you happy that God is a giver? Anybody here ever received anything from God? Yes. All of us. The very life that you have now. 
if you think it's the alarm clock that woke you up this morning, try putting it beside a dead clock. It's gone. It's gone. Everything you have came from God Amen. and belongs to God. Amen. 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 And, and so God is a giver. And in the Bible, in Corinthians, we read of, of nine spiritual gifts that he gave. But as we research the scripture, we come across some 28 spiritual gifts that is listed in the Bible. The nine in Corinthians, but also some in Romans and Ephesians, even what we call the five-fold ministry, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. The Bible says, and he what? He what? And he gave some apostles. So here it is again. He gave. Not so the word that he gave. And when you give something, it's a gift. In this context, God gave what we call the five-fold ministry. Uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists. Now, I don't want to mess with anybody's theology, but I don't know where some of the apostles are rising up. They want to wear you turn on Facebook and everywhere there's a new apostle every day. Some people just seem to be tripping on the topic. And it's, you know, I don't know what we're going to do after that. I guess it's going to be chief apostles and, and <laughs> arch apostles. What next, you know? Uh, but, but for me, you can keep the titles and give me a towel. The towel. The Bible says Jesus took a towel and buried it himself. And then he stooped down and washed his disciples' feet. And he said, even as I have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. Keep the titles and give me a towel. Because I just want to serve. I just want to serve. As talking about serving. Some people don't mind serving God as long as it's in an advisory capacity. You get it? And they don't mind serving God as long as it's in an advisory capacity. But I've come to know and learn that God ought to be served. And all my life is in service to him. So he gave some apostles and prophets and evangelists. And some people trip on those titles. And one man, he was so uh, full of pride. He said, I am both an apostle and a prophet and an evangelist. And so he made his business card with an apostle with a big A. Prophet with a big P and evangelist with a big E. So the first thing you saw when you looked at this card was <laughs> Lord have mercy. Tell your neighbor, stop tripping. Humble yourself in the sight of God. God will exalt you. It's one thing about God. When God exalts you, can nobody. Put you down. Can nobody stop you? When God opens the door, can nobody shut you? Yes. Because God does all things to you. And when He gave apostles who really set things in order, as the Apostle Paul and all the others, others did, Amen. He established a foundation. But He said there were prophets who would speak the mind of Christ to His people, and there were evangelists who would go in fields and declare the word of God that souls might be saved. And then once souls are saved now, you need somebody who is going to pass the believers well. When we started our ministry in Port Moore uh, some 22, 23 years ago, uh, the, the, the mission statement said we, uh, there, there were four things we decided to do. The vision statement was uh, Evangelism and restoration, a simple twofold vision of evangelism and restoration. And the mission statement was to preach the gospel to every creature, one, to pass the believers well, two, to prepare disciples and to plant leaders everywhere. Preparing disciples, preparing disciples. And disciples are not just followers of Jesus Christ. A disciple is a student who memorizes the words, the actions, and the lifestyle of his teacher in preparation to teach others, to train others also. It goes through four generations. Paul said, 
I, Timothy, who have committed to you, commit the same thing to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And so God is in the business of reaching the nation. God is not after your church. He's not after Emmanuel. He's not after Bethel. He's after the nation. He wants everybody to come in conformity to the principles of the kingdom. So what is the kingdom? The kingdom is simply the rule and reign of God. Yes. And when he came, God didn't come to it. Jesus didn't come to establish a church. He came to establish a kingdom. The kingdom of God is at hand. That's what he came to establish. But because his own received him not, he turned to the Gentiles. And as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. And so the church is really like a parenthesis. It's really in brackets between the sixth and the seventh dispensation. And God is dealing with his people known as the church. I'm glad to be a part of the church. The Bible says the princes of the world never knew that Jesus was the Lord of glory. Because they would not have crucified him. I'm glad they didn't know. Oh, tell your neighbor, I'm glad they didn't know who Jesus was. Because they would not have crucified him and had he not been crucified I could never be justified I could never be sanctified salvation would never come to someone Amen. such as I Amen. thank God tonight put your hands together and thank God I was in prayer last week and I heard the Lord speak to me and say population transformation. And I said, what's that, Lord? And as I sought to hear clearly what God was saying, he, he's calling us as Emmanuel. I, I, you know, if anyone else wants to join, that's fine, but the, the group that I lead, and please understand, my allegiance is to Emmanuel, but I'm first a kingdom man. Yes. Because the kingdom is bigger Amen. than the church. Yes. The church needs to catch up with the kingdom, yes. but that's for another time. And God said, population transformation. I said, what's that, God? It's a program that we're going to be launching. It's not even a program. It's a movement for the next three years, beginning December 2017 to December 31, 2020, God willing, where we will be changing the nation, one person, one family, and one community.